Greetings, people of God. Welcome to another glorious Sons of God broadcast. I really don't know if I'm going to put this one online, but I'm making it anyway because when I do my studying now, I uh, make a video so I don't have to write all this stuff down in notes. I, I used to just record it on tape recorder, but now this is even better because I can record it and see myself talking, but I mean, it ain't so much about seeing me talking, but I'm just saying. I went from just an audio recorder to a visual and audio recorder. I guess you would say that's better, I guess. I don't know. But anyway, uh, my name is Minister Ron Wilkerson, and my telephone number is 617-477-9283. I have another uh, phone number on all my other videos on YouTube, and the phone number is 857-249-5381. I might be putting that number back on uh, next week. But anyway, yeah, those are my two numbers, uh, 617-477-9283. That's my permanent landline home phone, and my cell phone number is going to be back on next week, 857-249-5381. Y'all going to have to excuse me a little bit because when I be getting heartburn and when whatever I get hiccups or whatever, I have to drink water. So you guys excuse me, but just remember what Shaka Khan said. Ain't nothing like the real thing, baby. No, that ain't Shaka Khan. I think that was, um, that was, uh, um, uh, uh, Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, something like that. Uh, but Shaka Khan, son, what was Shaka Khan, son? Chaka Khan said, uh, oh, uh, oh, no, forget all that. I don't know why I went on in there, but anyway, remember Pepsi said, they were saying something like that, too. Uh, the, the real thing, Pepsi, the real thing. But what I was saying was, the reason why I was saying all that was because, you know, people, they try to be so politically correct and so, um, you know, correct as far as form goes. You know, with the way they present something. They say, you can't do that on TV. You can't scratch your head on TV. You can't pick your nose or whatever. Maybe you shouldn't, but at least they're just being real, you know. So I'm saying, don't be offended by what I'm saying because I'm drinking water every now and then. You know, I don't know why I said all that. So I guess this is a video I ain't going to put online, but I'll still put it online. I ain't shy. You know, because, you know, sometimes God will even use certain things that you might say oh that's gross or whatever just to make sure those that are only those that are of the spirit are going to receive this word because if you want to be totally real in the book of isaiah they said the lord yahshua i'm not going to say jc i don't even like saying that word jesus christ because when you say the word jesus you're calling him a pig if you don't believe me you can go to google on your phone and say how do you say earth pig in latin It'll show you the name of Jesus. I said, whoa, when I saw that, man, I couldn't believe my eyes. Because the letter J wasn't even available until like 400 years ago. So Jesus was on the scene 2,000 years ago. So how could his name be Jesus with a J or Joshua? No Jehovah neither. Because of that letter J, you got to understand what I'm saying. The letter J wasn't even available to the um, to the world's alphabet until five, four. To 500 years ago it just came on the scene then so if the, the, the letter J just came on the scene 400 years ago how can his name 2,000 years ago been Jesus can't be you know that's what the Lord said you got to study to show yourself approved because if you just do a little bit of studying you'll realize that 99% of the stuff they're telling you at that place called the church is all satanic and you know, I know it's a, a tough saying. He said, "You oh you oh um, heretic or whatever, you oh, lunatic or whatever." No, it's just how I study and I know the truth. I grew up in uh, church too. My father was a Baptist preacher for years, and um, I knew the whole church world arena. That's why I came out of the church. But it's just so many things that is just a chip off the old Catholic block. Um, the, the Bible talks about the whole revelation, and it talks about in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, he said, he said, marvel not that Satan is able to transform himself into an angel of light. 
and his ministers are able to transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. Okay, now wait a minute. Let's back that up and look at this, what it's saying. It says Satan can transform himself into an angel of light, and this is gonna knock your socks off right here. Got socks on? I'm gonna knock your socks off. Okay, that angel of light is that white Jesus that you got hanging on your wall, and I can prove it. All you gotta do is go to the Book of Revelation where it talks about Yahshua, not Jesus Christ, because that ain't even his name, but the one known as Jesus Christ, JC. Um, in the book of Revelation, it said that his hair was like wool, and his face was brown, bronzed, bronze is brown, feet was bronze and brown. So you got woolly type hair, that's black hair, show of the world, nappy, and the, the Jesus that they display in your church, a big old picture of white Jesus looking like a woman with straight hair, there ain't no hair like wool. His hair is straighter than anything, like he got a perm. And his face is not black. So that's that's the angel of light that Satan transformed himself into. And they lying about even that. That he ain't here, but he's coming back. And I come to find out, you know, the, um, the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers, these people that own the, the bill of money that we got in our pocket, it said the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve is not the government. People think that, oh, but the Federal Reserve, okay, that's the government of the United States. No. Also, coming back through studying, the reason why they murdered Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, was because these men wanted to get the United States out of the um, habit of using Federal Reserve money. And they, that's why the Federal Reserve murdered them. Because there was John F. Kennedy was getting ready to make America independent from the Federal Reserve, so that we wouldn't be in all that debt to them. We would have had our own money, and that's the real reason why John F. Kennedy was murdered by his own limo driver. Secret Service murdered uh, John F. Kennedy, and if you look at the Gibraltar films, you can see the man in the, in the uh, limo turning from his left hand. Turn and then shoot John F. Kennedy right in the head. You can see it right on the film. You can see a pistol coming. Um, I'm doing it with my right hand, but my left hand's a little this situation going on with it. But he reached right over his left from the left side, looked back and blew his brains out. And you can see it right on the film. And then and it just goes to show you that everything you hear on the news, you're only hearing what they want you to hear. What they don't want you to hear, you'll never hear it unless you study. If, but if you just do a little bit of studying, you'll be amazed at what you find out from studying. And But people, that they, they, they got, mankind is so busy now trying to um, do everything through working instead of seeking God that they ain't got time to seek God. They got work, 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 one, two, and three jobs. They ain't got no time to read the Bible, not even to even open it. They be so tired from working one, two, and three jobs. They ain't even got that Bible got cobwebs, dust, all kind of stuff on top of it. Might even have flowers growing on top of that Bible. <laughs> Forget all that. Forget all that. But really, really, man, he's Matthew six thirty three says, "Seek ye first." The kingdom of God. I like doing that. I don't know why I do that. It's like a, a suspense, you know, building up. Put all that. Put all that. I'll put it online, too. I'll put it right online. I'm going to watch it on my big TV, 50 inch TV, in a few minutes. Yep. I ain't doing You yeah, get while I'm shaking my big fat head, I want to tell you something about them people that are over there in Israel. The white people that's over there in Israel, they got these big old beards looking like, I don't know, Rumpel Stillskin or whatever. And then they praying to the wall, going like this with their head to the brick wall. The people ain't Israelites. The original Israelites were all black. And um, I come to find out, right, the King, King James Bible, the original King James Bible from the earlier times, from 1611, that Bible had the Apocrypha in there. In there. If you don't believe that, you can Google that. And you can go to any Christian bookstore 
Or better yet, you can just order it from Barnes & Noble. And you'll see the Apocrypha right in the middle of the Bible, of the original King James Bible. You got the, first you got the uh, Old Testament, and then in the middle you got the Apocrypha, 14 books. And then the New Testament. I got one right over there. It says the, the original 1611 Bible. And then in 1619 was the year that the first black people was brought over here in ships. And you can read that in uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, verse 68. I, I never knew that was in the Bible. But then when I was listening to these brothers, you know, they called the original he Hebrew Israelites. But I got one problem with these guys. You know, they are the original Hebrew Israelites because all the black folks are the original people of God. And they're the original Jews. But the Bible said he came unto his own, the original Hebrew blacks and then his own received them not so then the creator father Yah his name was Yahuwah and the name of the son is Yahshua and he, then the, the original we Yahuwah the father Yah he made a covenant with the blacks because even before Adam and Eve it was the people there already that was God himself in these people plural when you, when you read the word Elohim, it's a plural word. That word Elohim for God is a plural. It's not a one, okay, you say God, he's a man, yes, he's a man. But he never was a singular man like God. I'm God, me, alone God. No, God was so big, he had a, a whole race of people called the blacks. And this is not a throwout to black and white. Because a black man killed my brother and my best friend is a white man, so go figure. It ain't about color, it's just the truth. And you know what we say, oh, you just prejudice. No, I'm not, I'm not prejudiced. I just told you my best friend is white and my brother was killed by a black. So go figure. It's not a color, it's not a prejudice thing. If you want to know what prejudice is, prejudice is when the white man used, used to hang us from trees and burn us down. That was prejudice. When your feelings go so deep, you gotta hurt somebody. That's prejudice. Oh, I, I hate you. I'm gonna hang you and burn your flesh while you still living. Bury you alive, Jack. Now that's prejudice. That's what the white man did to us. But I'm not mad about that. Cause the word of God, I believe it's the word of God, by the spirit of God. That if you don't forgive him, he ain't gonna forgive you. And you know, I know the fact that there's many things that was put in the Bible that God didn't put it there. And many things were taken out of the Bible that God didn't take out. So that's why he said if you add or take two from this Bible, you're going to be cursed. Because he knew they was going to do it. But nevertheless, the Lord revealed, and I know for a fact through my experience, that the Spirit of God is in that book. And if you even then with the Spirit of God that's in you, you'll know how to eat fish. What do you mean eat fish? When you get some good fish, like some pogies, you know better not to eat the bones. I don't know why I keep doing that freeze thing. Freeze frame! Fit all that. Fit all that. But yeah, when you read the Bible, you say, what? And here's something I know that God didn't put in there. Okay, okay. okay. Remember way back in the time when the blacks was picking cockets cotton and all that and the white slave master would go and rape the man's wife family just to take his hope cut the black man's penis off and all that stuff they were doing to us in the time of slavery hanging us from trees and then go to eat lunch they were oh man it was bad for the black folks and the reason why God did this to the black folks because they turned from God they turned from God and God said because of this I'm gonna make you be a slave unto your enemies and like I was saying in Deuteronomy uh, 28, 68, I couldn't believe my eyes when I saw what was in there. I'm trying to go in there now. Deuteronomy 28, 68. And it shows something that proved that we are the original um, black Jews of God. Deuteronomy 38, 68. And it says... And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt or bondage, 
again with ships by the way whereof I speak unto you, unto thee thou shalt see it no more again and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen or slaves and bond women or slaves and no man shall redeem you so you hear that I didn't be in my eyes because there ain't no other people that we know of in all American history that was brought to America in ships with the black folks. You can see that even on the movie Roots. They had all these ships with black folk lined up and chained up together like sardines. I never knew it was in the Bible though. I never knew it was in the Bible. It's right here. Deuteronomy chapter 68. You know what the, this Bible is nothing but an American history book for the black folks. And, and President Donald Trump a few months ago signed a bill. It was, it was called the RH-1242, um, not bill, but it was just an a, 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 a observation of something that took place in American history. And that, that was that in 1619, 11, uh, 1619, eight years after the original King James Bible, was printed um, 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 black folks was brought to America I don't know where from well like Africa and all the other places where the original people or the native people were black they brought sent them all the way over here because we were sold as slaves from our native land uh, or original land we were from which was all seven continents of the world all on all seven continents of the world it's seven continents that make up the whole planet. The original people on all of them was black. All people came from black folks. All people. Chinese, Puerto Rican, Cuban, they all came from black folks. But we was whited out. If you go on uh, YouTube or Google, you can say, um, say this name. There's a man called Washman Yah, and his wife is called, I'm sorry, Washman Yahoo. And his wife is called Deborah Yah. If you go on there and say their name and then say white it out afterwards, they have a whole series on historical truth events that took place in the United States and the saying what happened to the black man. You'll be amazed. And you know what? Even white folks have got online saying that they know that they come from the fallen angels. All you gotta do is go to the book of Enoch, chapter 105. You can Google it on your phone and read the story about Noah. Noah was born white from black parents. It's a known fact that a black two black couples can give birth to a white child. But it's not really white as in Caucasian. It's kind of like white like albino. Like you see albinos with these black nigger here. Well, not nigger. I'm sorry for saying that. Negro. You can say Negro. Or African American, they call us everything. It was calling us everything, is but what we should be called Jews. See, because now folks think that the Jews are those people over there, like I said, with them looking like Bronco Steel Skin with this big old beard and they white and they be playing to the wall like this. There ain't no Jews. The reason why they call Jews, they came over from Europe and other places where it was white folks and they came over here. And um, in 1945, that's when they first invaded Israel. You can Google that on your phone. Everything I'm telling you is, is in the public domain. All you got to do is a little bit of studying, which most folks ain't got time to do. They act like they're interested in knowing the truth. But if you don't study the truth where you know it for yourself, you ain't going to never know it. Because you can't, you, 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 God didn't make us to be able to receive truth. By what somebody told us. God made us to receive truth by what we study and found out for ourselves that it's true. You can't just take somebody's word and say, man, guess what? What? Da 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 da. They tell you something, you know, of significant importance and you take their word for it. You say, man, I gotta check this out, man. I'm wondering, is the banks really gonna crash this week? You say, I man, yeah, man, I heard all the banks, you're gonna be able to get your money no more. Man, the reason why I'm saying this. Because this day is coming. And the only people that's going to be protected from this economic collapse that's coming on the United States, you know it got to be coming with trillions of dollars in debt 
Sooner or later, whoever we get this money from, they're going to call our bill. They're going to say, I want my money or I ain't giving you no more. But really, the whole thing is a big setup. It's a big setup. The Federal Reserve, they're the ones that own all this money. And you can Google on your phone also that these rich Rockefellers and Rothschilds, the ones that own all the money, that you, the bill, every bill you got, it said this is a Federal Reserve note. And notice it says note. Because there ain't no real literal money. In the original times, the, 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 that Federal Reserve bill, it had to be backed up by silver or gold in Fort Knox. But today, they printing money and ain't no gold to back it up. So in other words, you got money saying it's a $100 bill, but it ain't no $100. Because in order for to have the bill, you need to have the proof in the physical realm of um, silver or gold to back it up. And none of these bills that we got now is backed up by literal money, meaning silver and gold. If you look in the Word of God, it talks about God owns all the silver and gold. Because if you have a bill or a coin, well, back then they had gold and silver coins, so it was literal money. Because you had the coin, but now, the, the, um, your quarters and dollar bills on the coin, if you open that thing up, it ain't nothing but brass inside. It ain't real silver. If they got some that they make this real silver, you gotta buy them. But it's very rare. And another thing, you can have a hundred million dollars in the bank, but only a hundred thousand of it is insured. So when this money go belly up, man, folks are gonna be going nuts. And they're gonna do it on a Friday. And, and then yeah, this is, uh, I searched it out, you know, not just historically in the, on Google, but in the spirit. Because every time I hear something that I got to study, I study it and then I check with the spirit of God within me, because he's the spirit of truth. Well, there's a lot of people that think they got the Holy Ghost, they got the Holy Ghost, because built within the Holy Ghost in your spirit is the spirit of truth. John 16, 13 said, when he, the spirit of truth, is come. He will lead you into all truth and righteousness. Because you see, the, the spirit of truth, which is the Holy Ghost, he's going to put a hunger in you called the hunger and thirst after righteousness. And if you're hungry and thirst after righteousness, it's the spirit of God. It's the spirit of truth. And if you don't know it, because everything we're being told basically is a lie. So you got to have the spirit of truth if you want to know anything about God. Because all the, well, I don't even want to say God, because that word, God, when you say God, you're addressing Satan. Come to find out his real name is God Rael. And when you say in God, those com the white commentators, the Catholic commentators uh, that, you know, re, um, you know, put the, the Bible from uh, Hebrew and Greek into uh, English, those folks were from the Roman Catholic Church. And when they were saying the name Yahuwah and Yahshua, it was so sacred and powerful, they couldn't even bear to keep saying that name, so they changed it. The Bible said, give unto God the glory that is due unto his name. Nobody stopped to say, what is his name? Because, like, even in school, what the blacks are being taught about history is all wrong. It ain't true. It's, it's, a, it's a terrible global conspiracy that's been going on for ever since Jesus, I was there I go again with Jesus, ever since Yahshua was on the scene, better known as JC. It's been a global conspiracy from the, Samarit the Samaritans, the Greeks, the um, Gentiles, and the, uh, what was the other thing? It's another name for them. Edomites, Edomites. The Edomites, the Greek, Samaritans, and Gentiles are all white. And the reason why the, the Jews never had nothing to do with the Samaritans, come to find out, because the Samaritans are white folks. Remember in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 8, I believe it is, where Jesus called that woman a dog? I always wondered why did he do that. Now, after studying many hours, which is tedious work, I come to find out something so you know, it's true. I mean, it's not glorious because I'm not glorying in the fact. But come to find out that white folks, the first white folks that came on the scene was after the fallen angels fell. 
What do you mean fallen angels fell? Which way really didn't lead? Fall. Fall, it, it gives the implication of somebody that accidentally fell. They didn't fall out of the heaven. They made a pact. They looked down from the heavens and seen the black women. Black women. And they said, hmm, they look good. I want to go into these women. And they made a pact to leave the heavenly, heavenly realm and be become fleshly <laughs> beings. <laughs> Just so they can have sex with the black women. It's right there in Genesis chapter 6. He said there was a there came a time when uh, the sons of man began to be multiplied upon the earth. And the, these sons of men were all black folks. And that the um, angels seen them and began to desire their flesh. And they had sex with these black women. These angels, angelic beings, they came out of the spirit realm and materialized themselves. And when they came on earth, they was white. You can, it's a no-brainer. If you was to go from no color to a color, what would that first color be? White. He said, how do you know that? Well, just imagine. What, what is the, the lightest color of all colors? White. So if you're going to go for no color, you would have to come in as the lightest color that's available. Look at that. Hey, Melissa. Hey. That's my friend Don over there. I should put him on, but she said she don't want to be on. But when it's the niece, I turn the camera over there. But I ain't gonna do that to you. Oh yeah, that's my friend. That's my friend. Yeah, forget all that. But yeah, man, I'm so excited. But now I got now since I ain't no no machine listening, I ain't inspired to go forward. <laughs> but I'm gonna go forward. Yeah, man. You know it's amazing. There was all. There was all. <laughs> There was all, there was all, uh, you know, the what these angelic beings came down. And like I said, if you go to Enoch chapter 105, and you can read all about it. And when um, Noah was born, he was born white, but like albino white. But yeah, so much thing. But it's, a, it's another glorious thing I want to put on this tape, and I want to see it when I play it. That the Lord was showing me in the book of Hebrews. Chapter 2, verse 10. Let me go over there. So I did show you guys how that is talking about us, black men. That I, but I got to let you know that even though you're black and you're chosen by God, that means you're Jacob. Remember Esau and Jacob? Esau was born white and Jacob was born black. In the book of Romans chapter 9, guess what it says? It said that God loved Jacob, but he hated Esau. So what I'm... But what I'm saying is I'm not being like those Israel, Hebrew Israelites that be on the street corner saying the white man is a devil and like the Farrakhan and all that. A black man can be a devil too. And, and, and these Hebrew Israelites, they say the white man can't be saved because there are scriptures in, in the Bible that indicate they can't be saved. But that was a time. That was the time up until when uh, the scripture came to pass that he came unto his own and his own received him not. That was talking about all the black folks. They didn't receive him. So he turned to the Gentile, the white folks, to make them jealous. And it worked. It's working for the true people of God. And the fact that a matter like Jimmy, um, Jimmy Swaggin and um, uh, what was that other great evangelist that was white, Donna? Billy Graham, all these men. God bless their souls for preaching the word of God, but they have no authority to preach the word of God. Yep, that's right. All the only all the true sons of God are all black. And it's like I said, it's not a, a bigotry, prejudice type, type of saying. It's proven in the word of God. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 12, it said that Christ... Better known as JC. I ain't gonna say the name. I don't like to say the name JC. You know what I'm talking about. Yahshua, he was black. And his whole body was black. And, and it's not just one man. It was a whole body of people. And they were all black too. And so in the book of Re Romans, chapter 11, it talks about being of the true vine and those that were grafted in. The true vine of the blacks. And the only one, anybody else that come into this 
Messiah Christ, um, body of Christ, they have to be grafted in by the body of Christ, which is all black. All black. You cannot be a king in the kingdom of God, which is here now, but it's coming in all the glory of the physicality of it, like the kingdom of God is here now. Say, how do you say we're in the kingdom of God now and I'm going through all this pain and misery and suffering and sin in the kingdom of God? Because Matthew 13, 41 said he, in that time he's going to gather out of his kingdom all the sinners. You can read it for yourself. You said you wouldn't imagine the kingdom of God got any sinners in it, right? Because it's, it's the kingdom of God. But it has to be um, just like when they're doing and making an old building new again. It's called they go into construction and uh, they remodel. So this is the kingdom of God right here. Yep, right down the street. A baby just got murdered. I know. But it's still the kingdom of God. God's going to exterminate the earth into the kingdom of God and all the pureness in that time. But he's giving, making more time so those people that are not saved got more time to get saved. So he's bringing forth truths that will help lead you to salvation. You can't come into salvation without the truth. And every all these things are, are so much lies. People say, should I be Catholic? Should I be Protestant? Should I be Jehovah Witness? Um, Presbyterian? No, you need to be of the Christ seed. Not Jesus Christ either. Yahshua. The Messiah. You, and you just can't join this. You born this. Ephesians 1 and 4 said we were chosen in him from the foundation of the world. And God is spirit. John 4, 24 says God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. And you know, before your mother had you, God had you. And you was completing God in the realm of the spirit. That's why he brought you into the earth realm. So you can experience what you are in the spirit realm. And all has to be done in the renewing of your mind. Now that was the whole lesson right there. And you know, people, you know, they say, okay, I'm saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and da da da. But now you got to be born again in the renewing of your mind. And people ain't willing to go through that transformation. When you come to the point, you say, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I only live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. What? Oh, man. You gotta hear that. I gotta say it again one more time. Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, so I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm crucified with Christ. So, who is this I'm looking at in the mirror? Check it out now. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. But yet not I. But it's Christ living in me. And the life I now live in this flesh. It's only because of the faith of the Son of God that loved me and gave himself for me. Man, I'm getting goosebumps, turkey bumps, chicken bumps, parakeet bumps. I'm getting all the bumps. Get all that, get all that. But serious, man, this thing is so beautiful and lovely. And people say, I'm waiting on J.C. to come back. I ain't going to say the name. You know, J.C. come back. But they don't realize the truth is he's already here. You ain't you. If you striving... And your endeavors are aspirations and endeavors as far as your spiritual life. The climax of your spiritual life is to let Christ be your spiritual life. And not just a part of it, but all of it. When you died, when he died, you died. When he was buried, you was buried. When he was crucified, you was crucified with him. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 2. In Romans chapter 6, yeah, you can find all these six, six steps of man. We were crucified with him. We died with him. We were buried with him. We was quickened with him, raised and seated. Six things, six steps of man. We were crucified with him. We died with him, buried with him, quickened, raised, and seated with him in heavenly places. But in actuality, I hear some of these white preachers preaching. They say that applies to everybody. No, it doesn't. It only applies to the sons of God. But it's available to everybody if you hear 
their word. Jesus said, I pray not for the world, but I pray for them and for those that hear their word. See, all this stuff I'm saying is right there in the scripture. People don't, they don't got time to look at it. They just don't. And it's sad, but I was talking about oh, uh, something that I was going to go over to in Romans, Hebrew. I'm not sorry, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 10. God showed me this the other night, man. Because right now I'm in my, um, my uh, owner, owner uh, dwelling place. Blessed to me by Father Yah, Yahuwah. Previously, up until 19, uh, last time I had my own apartment was in 1992. But I had backslid and lost everything that I had. My car, my apartment, my bank account. I went back into the world because I was looking for God to put me together with my daughter's mother. But God, the Lord said, hey, she ain't your wife. And I couldn't receive that, so I told God, I'm going I'm to leave my walk of salvation because of it. And man, I'm so sorry I did that. I'm trying to like punish God, like I'm doing him a favor by living saved. My God, I'll never do that again. I went back on drugs. You said, what kind of drugs? Never mind, drugs, they all bad. I went back on drugs, drinking, smoking. I was a miserable creature. I lost my apartment, my job, my business account. I lost everything. I had to go live back with my sister. And then when I was telling the Lord to come back to me, the Lord showed me a vision of, of himself with his arms folded. And I'm calling on him and his back was turned to me with his arms folded. He said, nope, I'm not coming back to you yet. You got to suffer longer. My God, it was a sad experience, man. But let's move on from that. Okay, let me let me take y'all here because I'm ready to shut this down. Over there in Hebrews, I'm going to show you this revelation that God showed me. In Hebrews 2, remember he said to, to make the captain of their salvation perfect? Let me read that. It says, for it became him for whom are all things by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now I'm gonna have to break that down for you. You remember in John 1930, I believe it is, where Jesus said it is finished. I think that's John 1930. He wasn't just talking about an event of the crucifixion. He was talking about the. If you look up the word it and in the concordance. It says, baffling when self. What? Okay, baffled when self. Now we know. Can you give me some water here, please? Please. Um, we know when it speaks of the Holy Ghost, it said he was a mighty rushing wind, right? But this rushing wind is indicating, speaking of um, the Father Yah himself. And uh, this rushing wind, he'd be, the reason why he's able to rush is because he know exactly what he's doing. He don't need to take time to make sure he's doing things properly. He can rush as a wind. Rushing wind. So, um, so the word it... It's talking about the self. Like when anywhere you read in the Bible where it says, thank you, itself. Okay. It's talking about the flesh. It. Okay, how do I know that? Okay, imagine God is dealing with uh, someone named Jeffrey. He said, Jeffrey, come into the glory. And Jeffrey said, no, I can't. I'm, I'm unworthy. I can't come into the glory. He said, no, Jeffrey. The Lord said, Jeffrey, come on into my glory. He said, no, I'm not worthy to come into the glory. Because this is the, the uh, human mindset of man. That he, because he don't have the cleansing and the washing of the Spirit of God, he, he constantly has a conscience of unworthiness. So that's why the Word of God said that the blood of Yahshua, not J.C., he's able to purge your conscience from dead works so you can serve the living God. 
See, it's your conscience you got to be living. Because, you know, when you have sin in your life, even though if God do forgive you, and whoever you offended forgive you, you still don't forgive yourself. That's, a, that's where the problem is. You can't forgive yourself because your conscience needs to be purged. So, so, so this is saying that Yahshua took on us and brought us into glory with himself. So this is what he did when it says it is finished. It said, so it became him. We became him. See, people don't see that in that revelation. It say, they think it's just speaking, for it became him. Like, you know, they're saying, it became him. Like, you know, like, it don't, it ain't saying what you think it's saying. It's saying something much deeper than that. Uh, verse 9, I tell you, it says, for we see Yahshua. It says Jesus, but it's Yahshua. For we see Yahshua, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. You hear that? He tasted death for every man. Oh, man, you got to get that. Even the baby that's going to be born tomorrow, they died already in Christ. Already. Why was he, how was he able to do that? Because he was God. When the death on the cross was not just for the Jesus. I mean, Yahshua, there I go again, using that curse word, Jesus. It's Yahshua. Yahshua, he took on your being and made it his being. So good, it's so that the Father Yah didn't have to kill Ronnie, Johnny, Tommy, Donna, Lenise. He didn't have to kill all of them separately. He killed all them people in Christ. It's a wonderful thing that he did. And I always said to myself, I wanted did Yahshua, not JC, feel that pain of death. Did he feel it? Because I figured, you know, since it was the Son of God, God took away the pain of it. I don't know, the Bible don't say that, but in my mind I'd be saying, okay, see, he was innocent. He had to shed the blood, but did he have to go through the pain of it? The feeling? I don't know. I don't know. But I know he died from me. And I know I'm waiting for that glorified body. And it shall happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Now look at Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 2. He said, if this earthly tabernacle was dissolved or, you know, done away with, I know I have a building of God not made with hands eternal in heaven. So Paul lost his head. I lost my leg. But guess what? We're going to get a glorified body. That's waiting for us eternal in the heavens. And we're going to take on this body in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Every day I wake up and saying, Lord, is this the day that I get my leg back, my body back, my teeth back? It's coming. He promised it. He said, This mortal shall inherit immortality. My God. The waiting is the hardest part. But I got to be satisfied today by faith. All right. I ain't even finished telling y'all what I want to tell you, but I'm ready to shut it up. But okay, over there, I'm going to give it to you. I'm just going to rush through it. In Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, uh, when uh, Joshua was getting ready to fight the battle of Jericho, a mighty angel came to him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua said, Are you for us or for our enemies? He said, Neither one, nay. But as the captain of the Lord's host, I am come. Joshua didn't understand that that man was Jesus. Now, there I go again. That man was Joshua, the son of Yahuwah, or better known as God. That was J.C., better known as as he, Yahshua, his real name, he said, I am come to help you. And he said, take off your feet because they're on holy ground. And this is talking about the one that's the eternal God at that time in the flesh. Joshua was known as the eternal God in the flesh. And Jesus, uh, Yahshua, there I go again, Yahshua, Revelation 1 and 5, that says that Yahshua, better known as J.C., is the prince of the kings of the earth. 
At that time, Joshua was the king of the earth. I got, God gave me this by revelation. And he said, I'm the captain of your host, Joshua. <laughs> and you know what that word host mean? A mighty angelic company of warrior angels. That word host mean Jesus, Joshua, there we go. Joshua is the captain of all the heavenly host of angelic beings and saints that died. They're all a mighty angel, angelic realm of warrior angels in the spirit realm. And they're all around me and the people of God right now. And you can't see them. Hebrews chapter 11 said, Wherefore seeing we are encamped round about with a great company of angels? That's what it is. I don't know, I don't know if I'm worried it right now, but I'm over here. Let me go right over here and read it. Okay. Uh, 12, I think. He said, Wherefore seeing we are also come past about with so great a cloud of witnesses. You hear that? These clouds of witnesses, those are the ones that was left behind. I see a lot of people believe that it's going to be a rapture because of what it says in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17. It says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a cloud and with the voice of the archangel. And we that remain shall be caught up with them in the clouds. That word remain, it means to be left behind. It don't mean them that remain like in us. It's talking about the other ones that was left behind that are in the spirit realm that you can't see. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you, see, it goes so good to know the truth. Because if you don't know the truth, you'll be leave the lie that them, them, them satanic pastors are telling you. I'm talking about uh, saying, no, we're going to be caught up with the Lord in the air, like in the clouds where the airplanes are at. Nope. The, with that word, the Lord in the air, it means the Lord that can breathe in and out. That word air in the original language means to breathe in, out, in and out. It's in the um, the Greek number 109. The Greek, if you get a strong concordance and you go to the Greek in uh, 109 of the, your concordance, it says uh, to be left behind. I'm not sorry to breathe in and out. Yep. When I seen that, I said, when I saw that, it blessed me so much. Because to know the truth, man, I'm telling you, oh my God. Oh man, I'm going everywhere. But anyway, let's get back over there to John uh, 5 14. I don't want to leave you hanging. Jesus, when Jesus had the people with him, and they was, you know, fasting or whatever. Jesus said, we can't leave these people hungry. Let's feed them. And they said, Lord, we don't have nothing to feed them. He said, don't tell me what you ain't got. Tell me what you do got. He said, we have but two fishes and five loaves. I said, okay, that'll work. Let's bless it unto the Father Yah and see what he does. It was enough to feed all the people. My God. <laughs> So that was John, uh, Joshua 5.14. He said, as captain of the Lord's host, I am here, I am come to thee. And see, this is a revelation that's hidden in the spirit. And you need revelation of the Holy Ghost to see it. You know, you remember in the, in the, in the um, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, only one out of those three had his feet on the ground. And that was the Son. The Father and the Holy Ghost, God is Spirit, the Father, and the Holy Ghost is Spirit, the Father, also. But the only manifestation of himself in the physical was through Yahshua, better known as JC. But right now, it's us. What? Right. It's us. We're the one with all the manifested power. You can read it in Genesis chapter 1. He said he's given it unto man. To have dominion over the whole earth. All right, God, I gotta leave this thing alone, y'all. I'm gonna, y'all, I'm gonna have to get back to y'all on that part. But let me just give it to you. Joshua five fourteen it said, "I'm the captain of the Lord's host." In Hebrews two and ten, 
He said, make the captain of the salvation perfect. When I looked at that word, looked up that word captain, it said a prince. Oh my God. And when you put that with Revelation 1 and 5, it said that Yahshua, better known as GJC, is a prince of the kings of the earth. And guess who the kings of the earth are? Yep. Us. The black man. Well, not the black men as far as Jacob, but the ones that God changed unto Israel. See, that's what that's what those Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites are, are boasting and saying that they're the people of God because they're from Jacob. No, but God got to deal with you now to change your name to Israel. And if he would have did that to you, you wouldn't be just saying that the white man can't be saved because he can. But you missed that part because you ain't been changed yet. I'm getting all the books, my Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, I got to let you tangle. I ain't, I ain't even really bring that thing out to y'all yet. But I'm going to leave y'all in suspense for the next video. But I'm going to explain to you how that. Now we're in the season of inheriting the powers and the physical reality of the kingdom of God. Where you're going to get that leg back. If you've been beheaded, you're going to get your head back. People don't talk about the saints coming back because they don't know nothing about it. They're all coming back. John the Baptist, he was beheaded. He's coming back with a head on his shoulders. They're coming back. And he said, he said, them that remain shall not uh, prevent them. Let me go back to that. The Spirit trying to tell me to tell y'all some more on that. Because a lot of people need to know the truth about this. You know, I put a lot into it in time past. But then I stepped away from it because it seemed like nobody wasn't listening. But you never know when they're going to stop listening. Okay, okay. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 16, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now it ain't talking about David and Paul and them that died, died in Christ. It ain't talking about that. It's talking about the dead in Christ that are right here living. Right, I just told you earlier, I'm dead in Christ, but yet I'm living. Remember I told you over there in Galatians 2.20? That's what it's talking about. It ain't talking about the, the ones that are in the grave, Paul and them that are in the grave rising for It ain't talking about that. It's talking about us that are dead in Christ. We're going to rise first because we're here first. We're the first ones here first. Here. The, the Jesus said, I come that you might have life and more abundant. Now. Not after you die now. If you've got abundant life now, which means life in the fullness, that's what it means when you look it up. Where do death, death fit, fit in that? My God. You know what? I'm so excited, man. I'm going nuts. Like I said, in my this is my third video that I made in my new dwelling place. I know once I get on this roll of speaking the word of God, I'm actually cultivating a seed that has been planted in my earth. It's going to bring forth God in the flesh. Revelation 21 3 said, The tabernacle of God is with men. <laughs> he ain't somewhere out there no more. He ain't the God who has no name anymore. He has a name. His name is Yahuwah. It used to be YW. HW, but they had the Bible now with Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahshua is the son name. It ain't Jesus. Man, I better leave this thing alone. I'm blowing up. I'm starting to self-destruct. He said, then we wish our alive may remain. See, that's why you got to study. That word remain means to be left behind. And that, that dumb ones that are left behind ain't talking about us. 
We ain't left behind. We ain't going nowhere. And nobody else didn't either, but the ones that died, they was left behind. Why do you say they're left behind? Because they don't got no body. We're the first ones here in a celestial body. What do you mean a celestial body? A body that's ready right now to be taken over by the Spirit of God to bring everything that God is in the Spirit in your flesh. They was, they, them that remained, they was left behind. They stopped breathing. God showed me a revelation over there in um, Psalms 164, verse 4, I think it is. He said, um, uh, I gotta find I gotta find out. I think it's 164 and 4. I, Lord, I pray that's where you're at. Because I'm going, I'm going to, this the Holy Spirit that's leading me out into the thing now. 164 verse 4. You know the Lord, or is it 146? No, it's 146. Psalms 146 verse 4. It says, I'm gonna stop in verse 1. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye, O oh my soul, my mind. While I live, while I will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being, any person. He said, any being, like your body. He said, I'm gonna praise God in my flesh. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. You hear that? When your breath goes forth, you die. He returned to his earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. Now, God showed me two types of breath, death in this. The ones whose breath stops. Now, that happened to all the saints that died. Because when you die, you lose your lungs. You can't breathe. But then there was another one where he said his thoughts perish. Now that's the one we had. When we was born into this earth, our godly thoughts perished because we was born dead. Remember I told you that too? Galatians 2.20, I am crucified with Christ. So every man is born dead, but not physically dead dead, but right here in your heaven. This is heaven right here. Right here, it ain't up there. It's right here, heaven, the heavenly places. High places, right there, your big fat head, that's heaven. Be renewed in the spirit of your heaven. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In the book of um, Ecclesiastes 3.14, he said he has... Put eternity in our in our. Um, he set the world. I gotta go there. I can't say it right. But anyway, I'm gonna let me go there because I'm make. I want y'all to be confused. I gotta give it to you right. See, I'm seeking revelation, so I gotta explain what I'm saying. Otherwise, I'm gonna leave you hanging. I don't want to leave you hanging. Ecclesiastes three fourteen. It says. I know that whatsoever God doeth, it shall be forever. Nothing can be put to it, and nothing can be taken from it. And God doeth this, so that men should fear before him. That which has been is now, and that which is to be has already been. Okay, that ain't what I wanted to read, but that's awesome that you got to get. And what, what that title of this word is, that we're not going forward in time, we're actually going backwards in time. Said, what are you talking about, preacher? It's the truth, man. I'm just, don't hate me. It's, don't hate the messenger. I'm the messenger bringing you the message. And please don't hate the message either. Everything that tomorrow is already completed in God. But as far as we're concerned, we're going forward in time. But we're not. We're going backwards in time. Everything you're doing now is just renewing your mind to what you already are victorious in in the spirit. But it's not your victory until you experience the victory. <laughs> See, that's why they be saying, you don't have to wait till the battle's over. You can shout now because we won the battle. It ain't a reality to you that you won the battle unless you understand and experience 
that victory of the battle. But that's why you need faith. It'll help give you the victory, which you already have. But if you don't believe you got it, you won't experience it. So what will happen is that you will die full. I heard T.D. Jakes talking about that, to die empty. But still, that was a bad message because he telling you look forward to dying but accomplishing all you was meant to accomplish. you got to accomplish all you was meant to accomplish, but you don't have to die at all. See, that's what makes it so painful to hear these men of God that I admire. But they're robbing the people from the truth. You shouldn't have a life insurance policy because Jesus said you don't know. Oh, there I go again. Jesus, I, it takes a long time to get that curse word out of my mind. Yahshua is his name. Over there in book of Proverbs chapter 30 verse 4, he said, Who has set the stars in the heavens? And who has set the moon in its place? Tell me if you can his name. And over there in Psalms of Solomon chapter 1 verse 3, it said that the, the oil that the wise virgins had in their lamps is a uh, representation of knowing what his name is. He said, what do you mean, preacher? Prove it. Okay, I'm prove it. Okay. Solomon Solomon. Where you at, Solomon? Where you at before or after Solomon? After? Yep, Psalm Solomon 1 3. Okay, here we go. Because of the savor or the smell of thy good ointments or oil, thy name is as oil poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. You hear this? <laughs> My Hallelujah! Yahuwah! Okay, excuse me, man. You listen to this, man. He said, because of the smell or savor of thy good ointments or oil, that word word mean ointments mean oil in the original Greek, uh, Hebrew. He said, because of the smell of your good oil, your name is as oil poured forth. Therefore, do the virgins love thee. Mm. You hear that? The reason how the virgins that love him, they know his name. If you if you're in a love relationship with somebody, and and uh, they know other people only by their nickname, but the one you in love with, you gonna know their real name, cause you getting ready to get married. When a woman get ready to get married to a man, she know his name, cause she getting ready to have his name. Uh, we this is even true in our American culture. When a woman get married, that's where it used to be. They changed things so much. I don't know what it is now, but it used to be so. When a woman marry a man, that man rich, he's a rich man. That woman can go to the bank and take all his money out the bank because she got his name. And they would just assume that the husband told her to do it, but they could be in an argument and he can clean her out because her name is on the account as well as his. But now everything has changed so much. That probably ain't true no more, you know. But anyway, that's the way it is. When a woman married a man, her she would go from having her maiden name to her husband name. Everybody know that. So what down that God is cleansing his bride through the truth of his word. One of the things you're gonna know in the truth of his word is what his name is. Because the white Roman Catholic satanic folks. And not all, like I said, black folks can be satanic too. But uh, in the original of it all, the um, the white men came through Cain and Abel. Abel was black and Cain was white. And he killed his brother. And the same thing going on all through time. The white man been killing the black man. So don't bring it. Everybody knows it. Don't be shy. Don't be afraid. It's true. The white man is the enemy of the black man. The original creation of God. If the white man was an original creation of God, 
God would have put melanin in the skin. And what melanin is, is something in your skin that may be you able to uh, stand the um, fierceness of the sun's um, rays. White folk don't have melanin. What kind of God would create a child or a being under the sun and don't protect his skin from that? Not the God of I know. And to come to find out when black folks die, they do something at the hospital where they steal the melanin out of their skin and jar it up. Melanin is a valuable commodity. And you say, how do you get the melanin out of somebody's skin? I don't know because I ain't no doctor or scientist. But I come to find out, I googled it, there's a way that when black folks die, they take the, they steal the melanin out of their skin. I say, preacher, where you learn all this stuff? The reason why I know all this stuff is because I got one leg and I ain't got nothing else to do but sit here and study. Study, study, study. He said, my people perish because of the lack of study. Better known as the lack of knowledge. Can't get no knowledge without studying. And I study a lot. And even in this uh, human American culture, people know that knowledge is power. Not just power, it's potential power. Because you can have knowledge but don't know how to use it. That's where you need wisdom. Wisdom is being able to apply what you know when you need to apply it. Preacher, I didn't know you had all that sense. I ain't got no sense, man. Everything I know, I know from God. I don't know nothing. I'm just as stupid as I can be. I'm, I'm stupider than you are, most likely. The only reason why I know anything is because God told me. That's right. All right, y'all. Y'all don't drain me out. I got to go. There's so much I want to tell you, but I got to go. God bless you. I really want to tell you about this. I can't stop. I can't, I can't stop. Okay, let me just give you a little bit more. By the way, this is the longest video I ever made. It's three times longer. You know what that tell me? That I have gone further in the knowledge of God. I couldn't be, I couldn't be talking if I ain't had nothing to say. I don't know why I keep doing that freeze frame. Free frame! Who you mean? I'm so happy to get some smiling. Yeah. Yes, well, I don't know. I ain't got no TV, but I need to stop smiling about the text and stuff. Oh, I'm so happy. Happy in Jesus Christ. See, look at oops. Happy in the song don't even sound the same no more. He said, Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. How I love calling your name. Is that name sounds so sweet, but it's wrong. It's cursed. When you say, oh, Yahshua, Yahshua, it don't even sound right. But that's the real way. It's the real way. Yahshua, there's no greater name than Yahshua. They said, ain't no name better than the name of Jesus. It just, <laughs> the Jesus. <laughs> it's, uh, it just sounds so, you know, proper. But it's so wrong. And somebody said, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. You do want to be right. Yeah, you do. I don't know why I keep doing a free thing. Donna, what's up? <laughs> That's my friend, Donna. I can't put her on camera because she don't want to. But I'm gonna tell you some things about it. I ain't gonna tell her on that. I ain't gonna tell y'all her last name anyway, so you can't figure it out. Just a billion people named Donna. But anyway, this girl, man, she's really something. And I can tell the Lord been working in her life. Cause it was a time if I would call her and say, I need your help. She said, Man, I'm busy. I got I'm busy. But today, my wife had to go to the hospital and she called Donna and said, Donna. I got to go to the hospital. Can you check on my husband? And sure enough, I told my wife before she left, Donna ain't coming by here. She just told you that. But sure enough, 
guess who called me on the phone while I was making videos? Yep. Uh, I said, I was like, thank you, Yeshua. Even though I didn't have like emergency, but whenever I'm alone, sometimes even though I got God with me, you know, just being honest, I feel, you know, I'm not really afraid because in Isaiah 45 said, fear not, for you are mine. I be like, Lord, but I can't see you. And you can't bring me no ice water, no chicken. He said, but I'll make a way that you get it. How you gonna make a way that I get it? Donna, Donna, what? Donna don't got time for me. If I put it in her heart to help, she will help. See, you gotta realize that the Bible said, the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. Ah! I'm going crazy. You know what? A king, a president, a shack, or pharaoh, every last one of them, if they sitting in the seat of authority, God put them in there. Whether they do good or bad, God put them there. And over there in um, Romans 13, he said that all power, not some, he said all powers that be ordained of God, all of it, witchcraft, voodoo, whatever it is, God ordained it. Isaiah 45 and 7 said, I create evil, I created it. I remember I was going to church and telling people, showing them in the Bible. He said, I create evil. They put me out of there because it was in their book. If you're going to put me out, you got to put your book out. I ain't writing it. It's right here. Isaiah 45 and 7. He says, Come on, Isaiah. I'm getting excited down, y'all. Y'all better watch out. He said, I form the light. He said, I pulled the light. I'm about ready to get emotional now, y'all. I got to put my glasses on. I got to go on the cover. I can't see nothing out of them. They all pulled up. He said, Yahoo, Yahoo, Yahoo. Yahoo. Yahoo said, I pulled the light and create the darkness. Good God. I make peace and create evil. I the Lord do all these things. <laughs> Good God. I gotta go now, y'all. Y'all miss me up. See you later. Minister Ron Wilkerson. 617-477-9283. God bless. I'm gonna get back though. Tune into, tune into my videos. Just go to YouTube. Say my name, Ronald Wilkerson, W-I-L-K-E-R-S-O-N. And you'll see all my videos. And when, my, when that video shows up at the bottom of the page, just press subscribe and then all my videos will show up. But if you just do regular, only some of them will show up. But if you press subscribe, all the videos that I ever made will show up. And I'm ready to upload this one on YouTube. I used to have to call the... Um, the computer um, tech people to show me how to do it, but now I know how to do it by heart. I don't even have to call them anymore. And you know, I, you know, at first when I started working on the computer, I was not tech savvy at all. I ain't know nothing about the computer, nothing. But now I'm tech savvy. Now I know how to upload videos. I know how to do email. You know, um, working with the computer is something that you know. I never took a com well. I actually did took a computer uh, class before when I was in GED school, but I really wasn't like every day. It's just sometimes I used to go in there when I wasn't doing nothing else and sitting there. They showed me some things. I don't remember none of the stuff they showed me, but I remember the teacher showed me. He said that um, learning stuff on the computer is something that you learn by trial and error. Yep, and it's true. And you know a lot of things like if you don't go to school for something. You learn by trial and error, like working on your car. If you get tired of giving that man all your money, uh, you can uh, just try stuff out, and then you you're gonna find out if it'll work or not.
<laughs> you figure it out. <laughs> or you won't. <laughs> if you will or not. I gotta go. Alright, y'all. I gotta go. God bless you. I'll see you next time.